Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in my tips and strategies. And in this game, we're going to look at just a <clears throat> couple of mistakes um, that some guys made in a particular spot. Um, uh, so we'll look at that. Uh, and we're going to kind of look at something that happens at the end of the game, uh, which really just kind of affirms the way that I approach the game. Uh, the way I approach it is I'm trying to get the chicken dinner. I, I don't care about getting uh, the kill necessarily. Um, so I don't have a high kill count in this game. Uh, so to kind of get you up to speed on what had happened, uh, the plane had kind of come down through this way, I think. Uh, I've been jumping over into Monte Nuevo lately um, just to kind of be different, just to try to new do new things. And so I had jumped over to here, worked my way down here, uh, working my way down to this area now. And so the new circle is hitting. So I see it's basically going to end around Chumacera, um, uh, is where this next circle is. And then it ends up kind of staying close to over here. So I'm now working my way over from where I was. And the first guy that I actually encounter that I take shots at. Uh, is this guy right over here, M9 Eclipse. So uh, this guy, I think uh, it's not really a mistake. I don't know. Uh, here's where this guy is. Now, I think what would have been the best decision would have been for him to kind of just run straight up this hill, uh, straight through this path. Instead, what this guy does uh, is he actually works his way up the road, and then he comes up this way. And when he does that, uh, he ends up getting uh, his back exposed to me. And so I take shots because I know that this guy has absolutely no cover at all. Uh, I don't get him down, unfortunately. Um, I hit him several times. And so we'll kind of show you the distance. And I've got the SLR and I've got an 8 scope. Um, so you can kind of see where I am all the way over there. So I see this guy, I see him running up. So that's a pretty, it's a pretty good distance, um, for me to get these shots off. Uh, so I'm shooting and shooting and shooting. I go through the whole clip. I even reload and throw some more shots his way. So I end up hitting him twice, I believe. Yeah, I hit him right there. Don't do a lot of damage. Uh, and to this guy's credit, he's smart enough to keep running. He's 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 not trying to stop and find me and return fire at this point because he knows he's in too much of a predicament. So he gets behind this wall. I don't see the door open up. So I go ahead and shoot some more, and I'm shooting at the door. And I'm trying to make him think that I'm not running at this point. Um, I'm trying to make him think, like, if he gets up, I, I, I might still be looking right there. So I was just trying to buy myself some time uh, by doing that. So what I'm doing now is I'm running down across the um, field here, and I know where this guy has to end up. He has to end up coming along this road. He, he's not really going to have any other choice uh, because the circle is coming in at this point, so he can't run down here and then up. He's not going to go straight over because uh, he can't climb that mountain. So he's got to come this direction, and I'm going to go ahead and set it to two times. And I actually hear this guy, but I don't see him. And he's looking for me as well, but he doesn't see me. Um, uh, he actually hears me, but he doesn't see me. And he finally just ends up taking off, and, and you'll kind of see it from a top-down point of view. I don't know how I didn't see this guy. I knew how close he was. So I was trying to cautiously move up, and he ends up going down into this little crevice here, and I just don't see him. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I don't see him. Trying to figure out where this guy went to, and he finally just takes off running. And he gets up around the corner, and by the time uh, I work around, I'm searching around the rock. I'm thinking, is this guy waiting for me? Is he setting a trap? And no, he's just basically gone. So, set it back down. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, this is a guy... First Mafia, this guy... <laughs> <laughs> 
He wrecks uh, his vehicle right there. Now, this guy had an AWM and a Car 98. I don't really think that's the best combination uh, of weapons, but that's what he's got. So we'll look at this guy here in a minute. Now he's in a really good position um, to be elevated where he is. He gets a good um, shot here on Timber. He sees this guy, he's a lot, trying to line him up. Misses right there, Timber's like, crap, I'm taking fire. He's already hurt. Misses there. And boom, gets him right there. So he gets a really good shot on Timber, ends up getting him down. So set it back to normal speed. So M9 is coming along. And the thing that I thought that was really odd uh, in this game, there's a guy right over here, Greg Sucks. Love the name. He doesn't think highly of himself in this game. But, um, yeah, Greg ends up moving um, out of this elevated spot, and he's moving down into the town of Chumacero which I don't think is the best decision. I think anytime you can be elevated, it, it's better. Um, but he, he decides to go a different route. Um, I'm moving along now. I'm moving along really cautiously because I'm convinced that there's going to be people up here. And there is. It's just both of them, the two people that are here, they're all the way up here. So kind of show you right here, M9 ends up seeing First Mafia. Now he sees this guy and plane goes over. Now here's the thing. First Mafia puts himself what I think is in a terrible, terrible position. Boom, he goes down. Now here's the thing. You know, Eclipse sees him, rushes over, gets him down immediately after he gets into this position. Now guys, I, I, I think this is a really bad spot to be in. The reason I think this is so bad is because when you position yourself to where, okay, I mean, he's in an elevated position and he can kind of look down across this valley. The problem is anyone who sees you is going to get shots off and there's nothing you can do about it. When you don't provide yourself the ability to move, you're basically kind of like fish in a barrel. I mean, you just you're you're completely stuck so even if they starts to take fire he's only going to have the ability to kind of run down run over here and then back up the hill and he's still going to be exposed the entire time doesn't mean that he can't get away it just means you're, you're probably taking damage from that first shot and it depends on what weapon someone's using they're going to end up using um uh they're going to get multiple shots off so if it's like the SKS, um, the, the only real chance you have is if someone's using like Car 98 or the AWM, you know, they have to reload uh, every shot. So, uh, Zernak is a guy that actually dropped near me at the beginning of the game, and he did a good job in kind of working his way over. Um, he ends up seeing this guy over here, Redhead, and H Town ends up. Uh, seeing this guy as well. We're down to 11 people at this point. Um, H-Town is being trailed by Pee-Wee. Uh, Pee-Wee did a really good job this game in kind of trailing people um, to see where they end up. So H-Town is moving along, and he's got the Groza, I believe. I think he does. So Redhead comes up. No, he's got the... Is that the Grozer or the Aug? Uh, well, he gets him down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think he's got the Aug. But now he is taking shots. Now, he's taking shots from Zernak, who is using the VSS. And uh, the nice thing about the VSS is at a good distance, no one knows where the shots are coming from. Uh, that's like the huge advantage with that gun. Um, so, Greg is shooting at... Man, I don't even know who he was shooting at. Um, man, I don't even know. He's not shooting at H down. He's not shooting at Zernak. Uh, so I don't know. So anyway, let's just kind of pause it because we're down to 10 people to kind of give you the layout of where everybody is and um, where they're positioned. So I am still 
moving my way into sort of this top elevated position uh, over Chumacera and um, I get really lucky with where the circles end up being as you'll see here in a minute that I don't have to give up my position. Um, now what had happened, um, M9 had taken out a guy who was over here. I can't remember who he took out, um, but he takes somebody out that was really close to train wreck. Now train wreck was on the other side of the circle and he was moving his way in and he gets lucky that um, uh, Eclipse ends up taking out the guy who was over here. And so train wreck is moving his way in. Now, unfortunately for Eclipse is when he fires off the AWM, this guy down here, Hefe, or whatever you say his name is, uh, I'm just calling him F-A-P-T. So PT is knows where these shots came from, and he is looking for Eclipse. And unfortunately for Eclipse, boom, he goes down. So <clears throat> this is the problem when you put yourself in this position, guys. When you put yourself in a position where you know you anytime you fire your weapon you're giving away your position and you have nowhere to move um that's kind of what you should just expect um you're going to get taken out so he ends up getting taken out right there uh fa just uh fe zor pt whatever the guy's name is <clears throat> he's just down there and he just kind of keeps staying in this position uh in this building it's a good place to be uh, now, Zernak is going to end up moving his way over. Um, H-Town is over here. He's working his way in. Now, Greg makes what I think is a, a, a mistake. What Greg is actually doing is he's working his way down what I call Main Street. Um, I think it would have been a lot better for Greg to have moved over and to come basically down this way to get into the next circle. But instead, what he does is he works his way... Um, just straight down the road. Uh, when he does this, H-Town sees him, takes some shots. Oh, daggummit. Every time I click on somebody, it ends up being the wrong person. Um, yeah, get to Greg here. So... He ends up getting H-Town down. Once he gets H-Town down, because H-Town just ran right in front of him, um, he busts through this window. Or he, I mean, he goes through the building, but Zernak is already here in the circle. So he's looking for Greg. So he knows where he's at, and he's just kind of just patiently waiting. He busts through there, and Zernak just lights him up. So basically, it's the end of Greg. And that's why I say it would have been, I think, a better decision for him to have moved down the side. If he did that, I think Zernak probably would get H-Town down because he would have been in sort of the same position uh, that Greg was in. So we're down to seven people. Now, what Trainwreck has done is he's worked his way all the way over, and he is working his way up to the top of the hill. Now, at this point... I knew that there was nobody else up near me. I thought there was a chance that there could have been somebody right over here. So I kept looking in this direction, um, but I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anybody. And all of a sudden, I end up hearing this guy come up the side. Now, I get kind of lucky in the fact that there's only one way into the area that I'm at. So I know when I hear this guy running up the hill, that he's going to pop up right in front of me. Uh, so I'm positioned, I'm kind of looking in the opposite direction. Then I hear train wreck run up the hill. I'm taking some, uh, I think I took a syringe at that point because I hadn't taken any damage. So I think I had like one or two. So I go ahead and use it because we're down to seven people. And train wreck just, you know, runs up, jumps the fence. And I get him down immediately. I mean, there's just not much he could do at that point. Um, uh, it was just kind of a good position for me to be in. And, you know, lucky that this guy didn't have a choice. He had to jump right here. So I raid him real quick. I get a couple silencers off of him. So Zernak is working his way down here. Now, Pee Wee had seen uh, Gun 
destroyer and he was trailing him and I'm a big 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 believer in trailing people trailing people gives you information the more information you get the better off you're gonna be so Pee Wee is trailing this guy because he sees where he goes um, Gun doesn't have a helmet at this point he had, had it blown off and this guy right over here Gav Dog um, well it's a female character so we'll call her she now she had seen or heard where these shots were that I had just put on train wreck so she's looking in my direction but the problem is she's kinda oblivious to what else is going on the other thing that they're sort of oblivious on is the circle and the circle is gonna end up making a huge impact for these three characters so Gav We'll look at her here in a second. Pee Wee is still kind of trailing this guy. He's trying. He's looking to get shots on Gun Destroyer, but he's so far out, and now he's taking damage that he doesn't have a choice. He's got to run up, and so Gun is just kind of waiting. He ends up seeing this guy because he's looking behind him, sees this guy, and gets him down and there's just not much he could do because uh, he took too long to get in there now Gav is making a terrible decision at this point she is so far out from where it is that she needs to be that she is going to take so much damage she's giving off noise gun ends up seeing her and <coughs> excuse me she ends up running up and then doubles back didn't like where she was going and it's too late she runs right into gun destroyer so she just took basically too long uh, we're now down to four people and so here's what I know at this point based on there was a fight that was taking place down here between Zernak and PT and I just heard those shots down here so we're down to four people so immediately what I know is that there are two guys who are over here because I didn't see the kill feed go up and then I'm hearing shots right over here so I know somebody just went down so I know that there's somebody right over here so I know that I am in the best possible position and so you can see where this circle is and I'm like oh my gosh like I've got every advantage in the world in this game at the moment like there's a really good chance I'm going to win this just based on sort of the fact that I knew where every single person was and I was in an elevated position um, I had the SLR and so I'm, I'm moving over and I'm kind of looking and I end up seeing Gun Destroyer and I'm able to get a shot off so I know where those two guys are they're still shooting I see this guy I wait for him to kind of stop and boom I get the guy down right there so now we're down to three and I know where the last two guys are and I know that one of them is about to go out because uh, these two guys are gonna be so close to one another they're gonna be fighting so uh, Zernak to his credit you know he, he he put up a good fight but he ends up getting taken out right here ends up getting taken out and sort of the end of him now I'm watching this unfold. I see the end of that fight right there. So now I am looking, I'm looking right at uh, PT. And I know that, again, I've got all the advantage. What was going through my mind, because I had actually just been playing a few games and I had died to headshots from Car 98s um, in the previous two games. And so all I'm thinking of at this point is like the only way I'm going to lose this game is if this guy gets a headshot on me that's the only way I'm going to lose and so I'm kinda of waiting for this guy to get positioned I end up trying to take a couple shots uh, on him I switch over to the six scope and scroll back so I'm really kinda of using a three scope at this point so uh, I'm looking for him. I end up taking some shots. This guy doesn't know where I'm at. So he's looking for me, but he doesn't see me. And I'm kind of waiting. He moves over to the other side here. I don't hit him. And so I miss those two shots. Now when I miss those two shots, I kind of say to myself, like, okay, if I'm this guy, where would I go now? 
and what made sense was be for him to pop out back here because he knows that he's visible if he's standing right here and so now he knows that I'm going to be somewhere right in front of him so he's smart enough to kind of move around to the side here and we'll kind of show it from my perspective so I'm still looking but then I move over to the right because that's what makes sense I see him and I end up getting a shot off right there now here's the thing guys you know I know that he's using a sniper rifle and you know when I hear that shot so again, what's going through my head is the only way I'm going to lose this game is if he gets a headshot on me. So here's what I've got to do. I got to make sure that, you know, I'm going to make the attempt to get my shots off, but there's three seconds to go. I knew that the time was ticking down and I knew that he wasn't in the circle and I knew that there was no cover at all. This guy was basically in no man's land, so the only way I'm going to lose this game is if I make a mistake and make myself visible and end up getting uh, taken out to this guy's sniper rifle. It's the only way I'm going to lose. So I knew that I had just gotten a shot off, and so I'm looking again, but I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm moving. I don't want to stay in one spot. I get, you know, I shoot, I move. <clears throat> shooting more but I just keep moving because I don't want to stand still this guy has to move again I hit him right there I get another shot now here's where I made my final decision to basically win this game when I got that next shot and I threw basically that last shot at him I know he's behind the rock I know he's not in the uh, in the safe zone so basically at this point I'm going to put myself out of the picture. I don't want this guy to basically see me at this point. So I back up, I reload, I move up just to kind of see if he's running, move back up, and that's where he goes down and I get the chicken dinner right then and there. Um, guy dies to the blue zone and it's hard to kind of fault him. It's, it's not like, it's not like I want to say he makes a mistake. He just, look, I had every single advantage. The, the the stupid, stupid decision that I could have made there would be to, like, I, I need to get the kill, I need to get the kill, instead of recognizing that the blue zone is going to do it for me. The only way I can kind of screw up is uh, if the guy gets a headshot. So even if he makes it to the safe zone... I'm still in a really good position to be able to get these shots. And I had already said in my mind, um, you know, I'm going to take like one more shot with the SLR and then I'm going to switch over to the M4 uh, and I can probably get the guy down that way because I can kind of move with the automatic fire um, instead of trying to just scope them down. I can just scope them down um, with the red dot at that point. So I had every advantage in the world. I tried to make sure that I was paying attention to, you know, the time limit. Um, this ended up being a really good game just because I get the chicken dinner, but, um, you know, I was glad that I was just able to kind of recognize the scenario for what it was, and I allowed the game to kind of do the damage for me in order to get the chicken dinner. And that's kind of the lesson there is, you know, just be aware of kind of what's going on. And then, you know, the other thing is, guys, never put yourself, never, ever put yourself in a position like these two guys did where you're you're basically stuck. You're sort of, you know, you don't have the ability to move the way that you need to move to get out of the line of sight. Um, this is just sort of a classic mistake. It's a mistake I've made plenty of times in the past. So um, anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you next time. See ya.